What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So it's Wednesday, it's hump day, and man does it feel like a hump day. Like a day that we physically have to get over and pass. This is insane. I woke up this morning, the market was down $12 billion in just one hour, and then it continued to fall as I actually prepared this video this morning. The price has just been dropping all morning. This is crazy. It had one little spike up after it hit like 69, then it kept going down again. If you have a look at the the biggest gainers of the day. You have Bitcoin Diamond randomly up 100%, but literally besides that, Drop Hill, MOAC is up 3%. The rest is just Tether, True USD, which are stable coins. And literally, if you look at it, everything else is down. It's the same exact pattern. Bitcoin took a hit. It took every coin down with it. We're sitting at a $6,930 Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance surged from 53% all the way up to 55% in a matter of hours. The market's currently sitting at $217 billion. And as you can see right here, this is what we're dealing with. This guy right up here. So yeah, what are my plans? Well, to be completely honest with you guys, I have a little bit of reserve in stable coins, and as soon as this video's done, fastest invest in the West, I'm scooping up on this dip. Why? I don't know, because I'm crazy, and I buy the dip, not financial advice. However, you know, if we look at what's been going on with this uh, lately, there was so much good news that came out, right? And what do we know about the manipulation in these markets? Is every All of a sudden, yesterday, everybody was like, oh, Bitcoin's going to 10K. Oh, $122,000, this and that. All the experts were coming out of the woodwork saying everything was going to go up, right? Well, stupid us, right? That should have been the, uh, you know notice to sell because look at CNBC. I mean, basically, if you do the complete opposite of everything that CNBC says, you usually end up making some money, right? So what's really interesting here is I was looking at this chart. Now, given what happened today, okay, you look at this and you realize that this is the Wall Street cheat sheet, the psychology of a market cycle. You can pretty much find this anywhere online, literally. And if you look at the Bitcoin chart, we're literally following this exactly. One, two, three, four, five. Here we are. We just just took a hit. So the question is, are we going to follow this chart and actually take off? I mean, it's kind of eerily similar, guys. It's kind of creepy, right? So anyway, why are we taking this hit? Well, it looks like this was the big news that came out. So Goldman Sachs, they are saying that they are out. So they're ditching their plans to open a cryptocurrency trading desk. It was only early last month when rumors circulated that the legacy financial institution was even doubling down on their digital asset fever. That appears not to be the case anymore, and markets clearly are not taking too well. Now, you, you got eToro, market analysis Maddie Greenspan noting that the expectation of adoption by Wall Street has been a major theme for cryptocurrency markets this last year. Obviously, everything's been revolved around Wall Street. Wall Street's coming in. Big money's coming in. ETFs are coming in, right? Strange. This was supposed to be a decentralized place, but yet we're like begging for regulation and we're begging for Wall Street and these guys to come in, right? So he says, even if it's not true, it should be enough to cause a minor sell-off like this in cryptocurrencies. However, they did say that as part of their decision, Goldman has moved their plans to open a uh, cryptocurrency trading desk further down its list of priorities, but they're not saying no to it. They're just not interested in it currently at this time. But as we can see, a lot's going on and people are reacting the way markets react and everybody's dumping and it's like, come on, guys, get over it. This FUD is ridiculous. Everybody acts like a bunch of little children in the market. One little bit of news and boom, the prices just take a hit. So honestly, guys, I'm buying some cryptos today. Telling you right now, after I get off, I'm going in. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm dollar cost averaging because anytime crypto takes a hit, usually this big, it usually has a really, even just a minor 
pump usually with the next day. I don't know, could be totally different this time. And here's something totally crazy. So Bitcoin is currently trading, well at the time of this article, at $25,887 in Iran, more than $18,500 above the current Bitcoin price. Sure wish I could arbitrage on that opportunity, don't you? So anyway, looking at why this could be the case, it says first, US sanctions are probably starting to bite. Second, that lowered confidence in Iranian money to the point it has effectively recently crashed with its value against the dollar down more than 80%. And we're seeing this all over the globe. We're seeing it in Turkey, we're seeing it in Venezuela. Moving on, they say the third and biggest factor may be an apparent strategy by Iran to utilize cryptos as a method to bypass sanctions. As part of it, they have recently legalized crypto mining and may soon legalize crypto exchanges, which their central bank had actually banned back in April. It says, supply must, however, be low due to sanctions, but as such huge premiums, supply may well find its way as cryptos become a hedge of sorts, as well as a permissionless way to transfer value, a quality that even some governments might now find quite useful. But if you guys want, I did find a little bit of a relationship sh uh, chart here between Binance, Bitfinex, and no, okay, just a joke, just a joke. But moving on, serious, serious news today, guys. So this is actually from DC Forecasts, and this came out about five hours ago. But anyone that's running the Mega Chrome extension version 3.39.4, it has been compromised. So as you can see right here, it says that they've been compromised, and they may be able to steal Monero, and at the same time, they also say that they might be able to steal other data as well. So definitely be careful with that guys and if you have this extension please uninstall it just for your safety because we don't actually know what other sensitive information that they can actually obtain so yeah just be very very careful with that also let's talk about some lighter news because the markets are down today who wants to be stuck in a rut stuck in a gloomy day you know this is crazy so uh, another crypto kitty has sold for 600 eth or the equivalent at the time of hundred and seventy two thousand dollars but that's not even the weird part Here's the weirdest part. Well, actually, it says, according to the bio of the cat, it bit Rebecca Black once and finds spying on neighbors exhilarating. But that really wasn't the point. Anyway, so look at this. This is Crypto Kitty number 896775, okay? Now, the last Crypto Kitty that sold for less than this, which was the most, the highest sold at the time, was $110,000, and that was back in December of last year, and that was Crypto Kitty number 18, number 18. And it was generation zero. So clearly, generation zeros, the older cats, right, are worth a lot more. You're seeing average kitties nowadays being sold for roughly $9 on average. What is special about this cat? There's nothing unique or special. In fact, this cat is a generation nine. So some people are saying, was it an accident? Is it, is it a money laundering thing? Did this person have some really strange connection to this cat in particular? Really crazy. Just wanted to kind of throw it out there. So you could see right here, yeah, generation nine. Crazy. Snappy cooldown. There you go. For sale. 600 ETH. Crazy, guys. Absolutely nuts. So here's some interesting news that was circulating. So we found out that it wasn't just Tron that was actually trying to acquire BitTorrent, but NEO actually was trying to get their hands in it as well. So you know that they do have NEO Global Capital. So Neo Global Capital, they said, had actually put in a better deal. Their bid was for $170 million, which was $50 million more than Tron's bid, which was only $120 million. However, Tron ended up succeeding anyway. So basically what they said was that Neo's offer was not more favorable to the crypto to the company and its shareholders, so they ex accepted Suns instead. So according to the documents, it says that Justin Sun sought to purchase a controlling stake in the company by purchasing DCM's preferred stock, which amounted to 99% of the total preferred stock, according to public documents submitted to the California Secretary of State in June, each of these shares were valued at about $1.85 in the final deal, so Sun offered approximately between 90 and $100 million for DCM stakes. So unlike Justin Sun, Neo Global Capital sought to become BitTorrent's sole owner from the start, offering $115 million for all preferred stocks and $55 million for all common stocks. So they said that uh, Neo Global Capital was interested because it hoped BitTorrent could build a decentralized file storage system that would be generally useful for any decentralized web project or blockchain. There's a lot more, actually, there's like a couple more paragraphs in this, but I found that to be really interesting. And even though Neo actually offered them more, 
they ended up going with Tron's deal instead. Interesting. Very interesting. The plot definitely thickens. Alex from Nuggets News, what are you doing, man? No, I'm just joking. So, guys, I was really excited to review the white paper for uh, Walton Chain, but it looks like Alex beat me to it on this one. So, if you guys are interested, I'll drop a link in his, dis uh, you know, in the description. Obviously, he already reviewed it. I mean, I might review it, but now it's kind of like, you know, he already did it. So, what are you gonna do, guys? There's only so much time in the day. I get really busy. I just didn't have a chance to read it. But if you want, check that out for sure. Also. Let's talk about adoption. So we were just talking about BitTorrent, but if we have upfiring, they're actually releasing their updated source code ahead of time. So this is really good. They said we're working through the audit and testing phase and can announce a release date for version one when it's complete. The UFR wallet, smart contracts, and P2P downloading process have passed their testing with no issues and are functional in the current version of the DAP. We'll release the updated source code tomorrow. That has completed a, it has a new user interface, wallet, contracts, etc. So there you guys go. Now we are seeing that user adoption and, and difficulty of onboarding people. That is a problem. And one thing that actually, this is an article from you trust. I don't know if you guys know, have, you know, looked into you trust at all, but they kind of highlight the five major issues that are stopping merchants and consumers from adopting digital currencies. And they, and they are the lack of buyer protection. Number one, number two, slow transactions, three volatility in cryptocurrencies Four, the hassle of dealing with multiple wallets and five, obviously regulatory, uh, you know, regulation and compliance. So it's actually a really interesting article. It doesn't just talk about you trust, but it also goes into some of the issues that we're all facing and some of the solutions that could possibly make this a lot more easier for merchants to adopt in the future. You also have this article from Civic. So they're having an issue as well. It says, according to Vinnie Lingham, who's the CEO, while the technology is all in place for the system to work, it's the network of users that the company is struggling to achieve. In an effort to spur this adoption, Civic announced that they will be paying for all identity checks for users and business partners for now until the end of the year year up to $43 million. So whatever comes first, the end of the year or $43 million. He said, we basically said we're going to reserve a third of the tokens to drive network effect. For Civic, every new user that has his or her identity verified on the platform makes it a little more attractive for the next company looking for an identity solution. Obviously the network effect, right? Why did Facebook take off? Why did all these other things take off? Well, network effect, more people used it, right? So it says in this way, Civic is creating incentives for more people to join. So yeah, I mean, definitely, if they're going to do it for free, you know, go sign up for Civic app. Try it. See what you guys think. I mean, obviously, we have to start using these products. We have to start actually adopting the stuff. We can't expect other people to do it if we don't do it ourselves. And that's actually something that I had really planned to do for my channel. I wanted to be a living example. So as you guys know, I was just telling you earlier how I pretty much bought the dip. Um, yeah, like I'm all in on crypto right now. I, I have uh, just enough money in my bank account to kind of like get by and do what I have to do in my daily routine. But everything else is in crypto right now. Like I'm going all in. I'm looking at solutions. You know, I found a company that allows you to buy on Amazon for uh, discounted prices using Bitcoin. So there's all these different services that I've been really looking forward to testing out and trying and really diving deeper into crypto and, you know, just experiencing like what we're trying to say everybody else should do. You know what I'm saying? Like, so here, here's another thing too. Bravo, tip or pay the Bravo way, right? So this is more adoption. So this is the Phoenix based traditional payment application. Now this app already supports tens of thousands of users in the United States who are already making instant secure and anonymous payments. So what they're actually looking to do is they're looking to integrate cryptocurrency as well. They say user experience is a major barrier to adoption. We're just talking about that of cryptocurrency along with real world applications that people can actually use this is where the bravo comes in the app uh, makes it really easy for people to pay or get paid using fiat and soon cryptocurrency so i wonder how this is going to affect some of those gig worker uh, projects we're seeing out there like we've seen with thor we've seen with there's one called work chain and moonlight as well so if these other companies that are already existing can make it easier for the average user to get paid in cryptos i wonder what it'll end up doing for some of these other guys so moving on to some also crypto news the elastos tv box sold over 100,000 carrier nodes in august through their partner shanghai shijiu TV. They say, if everything goes well, we are hoping to take half of the Chinese TV box 
market. That is insane, guys. And also, we have an update from Request Network. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about Request Network, saying it's not very user-friendly, and they really needed to kind of up it, make it more user-friendly, make it more adoptable for the masses. So they've released a whole bunch of updates here. They have a ship, a more browser-friendly library supporting several new ERC-20s. Uh, yeah, create more basic extensions such as continuous payment, tax, and late fees, etc., etc. So definitely check this out, guys. A lot of updates. I definitely think the team has been listening to what everyone's been saying. Also, for those of you out there that are Electrify Asia fans, uh, I, I've kind of not been paying attention. I didn't realize they were doing this, but they have a current affairs live that they're doing, and this is episode six. So if you're interested, you can definitely check that out. Also, I have one article for you guys today. I'm not going to go into it, but it's an article on Stablecoins 101, a brief introduction and list of stablecoins. This is from CoinIQ. So very, very, it's actually really in depth. I was surprised the depth that they went into in this article. So if you guys are curious, not just about stablecoins, like what they are, but how they work, like the algorithms and the mechanisms that actually keep the coins stable in the background. It's a pretty interesting read, if that's your thing. And finally... We have a British artist selling his entire collection for crypto via WeChat. So this is Lincoln Townley. He's been called the next Andy Warhol by actor Michael Caine. So if you check this out right here, it says the artist expects that cryptocurrency prices will continue to rise, stating, I think there's a huge market for expansion with it being something that is going to inflate in value. Therefore, inflating in value will give you more of a vehicle to purchase art in the future. I wonder if he's also looking to potentially put his art on the blockchain, like as in ERC-721 non-fungibles that'd be pretty cool but he probably just sold this i don't know there's not really too much detail on it this isn't the first time we've seen people selling their art for crypto so i'm sure this is not going to be the last time you're going to hear about this either and finally guys i have to give an absolute shout out to this dude on d live crypto breakfast he put out almost a 20 minute full scale Rick and Morty video, but it's called Blockchain and Morty. And he's literally dubbed the entire video and he did a really, really good job. Like, uh, how did you first get into EOS? Was it Brock or I, Dan? I don't want to answer any more EOS questions. All right, hey, hey, I can work with that. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <gasps> Okay, so like literally the whole episode is dubbed and it's done really well. So shout out to Crypto Breakfast. Really freaking funny, man. Definitely a funny video that you made. And that being said, guys, it's Wednesday. Yeah, what are you going to do? The markets took a dip. We kind of saw that, you know, we had that potential short squeeze opportunity, but it looks like it went the other way. Obviously, everyone was bullish. Price goes down. Don't listen to CNBC. Always do your own research. You know the drill. Thanks for coming back to the channel. You guys are awesome. I hope you're still having a good week, though, despite, you know, the crap in the markets right now. But everyone's down. Just to let you guys know, I bought more crypto. So, you know, I put my money where my mouth is. I dollar cost average. You don't have to, just an opportunity. That being said, I freaking love you guys. Thanks for everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting. You're awesome. Clearly you. I'm looking at you. All right. That being said, my name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.